Hey there folks, welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture. And today we're gonna to be talking about the new album from Dirks Bentley, titled Riser. So okay, I'm gonna tell you something that I'm not exactly fond of admitting. From about mid-2008 to 2011, I didn't listen to a huge amount of country music. Sure, there were a few artists, new and old, that I did follow, and a few of my favorite country acts, like the Zac Brown Band, really exploded in that period. But mainstream country radio and I, we just weren't seeing eye to eye. And the only acts outside of my favorites that I ended up following or knowing much about at all were the ones that eventually ended up on the Billboard Hot 100 year-end chart, but honestly, I was drifting away from country music even earlier than that, and thus, going back to the discography of Dirk Bentley was something of an exploratory revelation. While I recognize a fair number of his singles from their radio, it became very quickly apparently while I, I never really got interested in him. Unlike acts like Rascal Flatts, Dirk Bentley stuck with more rough-edged, neo-traditional country music. But at the same time, I don't know, I don't really think he stood out on those earlier albums. He didn't have Eric Church's ambition, Jason Aldean's politics, Toby Keith or Brad Paisley's sense of humor, or even Tim McGraw's gift for comforting music and occasional killer hooks. And for a guy who churned out an impressive number of high-charting hits and albums, Dirk Bentley has never really stuck with me. Let me stress that that's not saying that he makes bad music or that his career hasn't been interesting. In 2010, after three critically acclaimed releases and one dud, he pulled a hard left away from mainstream country radio and released a bluegrass inspired album that featured plenty of supporting acts from the edges of mainstream country. But that was more of an overgrown side project than anything else. And it came roaring back to the mainstream in 2012 with Home. Now that was an album that did notch some hits, but nothing that I really loved, uh, mostly because they were lodged in the proto bro country territory, not on the charming side of it at that. And thus, I was seriously skeptical about covering his newest album, Riser, partially because I recognized many of the Nashville songwriting machine behind it, and not, bizarrely, Jim or Brett Beavers, two songwriters that he's been working with since the beginning of his career. Yet on the other hand, he was also recruited Casey Musgraves as a collaborator on his opening track. So, I gotta be honest, I had no idea what to expect from this record. How'd it go? Well, I can't believe I'm saying this, but Dirk Bentley might have won me over with Riser. Not to the point where I'd ever call myself a fan of the guy, but to the fact that there are so many elements on this record that shouldn't work at all, and yet somehow managed to come into an album that's pretty decent in all actuality, that's impressive to say the least, and I have to recognize that. So okay, let's start with the instrumentation and the production, where if, where if you know where my tastes lie in country music, you'd expect me to give this album a thrashing because it doesn't even attempt to hide its more synthetic elements. The spacey, very clean electric guitar tones, the reverb heavy production, the occasional bits of drum machines, the vocal effects, the reliance on heavier percussion over strong melody, I've been railing against all these production elements for months now. So, okay, why does it work here? Because it's bizarre that it does. Well, you know what? Part of it is in genuinely good composition and tone, especially in correlation with the songwriting, as all the elements work together in contribution to the atmosphere. Bentley went on record that he said that he was trying to create a more spacious, concert-driven sound on this album with a little bit more of a raw edge. And you know what? I'd argue he does it well, with well-chosen guitar tones that even either deliver a fair amount of punch or texture, either or going for a little bit of more plucky exuberance on his more acoustic side. And you know, somehow it feels cohesive. His production reminds me a lot of Eric Church's at his best, and Dirk Bentley isn't a bad fit for that style of production, mostly because he avoids the aggression and sticks with a disposition that's more human and more exposed and more willing to put himself out there. So okay, let's talk about Bentley himself. His voice is very re reminiscent of a cross between Jake Owen and Billy Currington, and yet he doesn't quite have the huge charisma that Owen brought to the table, which is probably one of the reasons that Dirk Bentley has never really stood out for me. But the more understated nature of his presentation does lend a lot of quieter emotion and very real subtlety to this record that I was not expecting. And it helps that he's very rarely obnoxious or leering or immature. Take Pretty Girls, a song that might seem to be your typical bro country song about girls drinking beer and clubbing, but the more atmospheric tone and the more pleasant atmosphere and the lyrical content stretches that Dirk Bentley is just content to watch and just take in that atmosphere. And his delivery bellies that. And it helps he has emotional range. He can play genuinely wounded as well as the quiet, sturdy, mature 
country singer as well, which is appropriate given his age. Now that takes us to the lyrics and the theme, where Riser reveals itself as an album where Dirk Bentley is trying to get over a breakup and seem to try to move on with his life in a new relationship. And while there is an undercurrent of bitterness in songs like Bourbon in Kentucky and Drunk on a Plane, the latter of which is a song that's really too stupidly hilarious to get all that aggravated about, it's a lot more melancholy sadness and it's played very well here. And while I won't say the technical songwriting is stellar, because it's not, the variety of situations that Dirk Bentley puts forward are, they're effectively realized here. Say You Do and Five are the songs where he's hoping without hope for any sort of reconciliation. I Hold On and Riser are declaration of faith and support in his new love and drunk on a plane tries to imitate Jake Owen's life on a party in terms of themes and general vibe except on a plane and with a little bit less emotional impact and coherence although that might have been part of the point but the two songs that really really jumped out at me were here on earth and damn these dreams the former is probably the riskier track in country radio because it tackles a crisis of religious faith alongside of the breakup and it's more of a little surprising that how far Bentley goes on this, acknowledging that even though he's read all the scripture and he has tried very hard to believe, sometimes his faith just isn't landing in the same way. And even if he did have that faith, it's not going to bring her back in the end. And then there's a song, Damn These Dreams, a song where Bentley is caught between his passions and his family. And it doesn't exactly provide a resolution to that song. And it really hit me surprisingly hard. It had a real emotional gut punch to it. So, okay, I said a lot of praise about this album. What didn't work? Honestly, it's more of a series of little things rather than just one overarching problem. I'm still not a big fan of the slicker, more spacious, and less intimately textured guitars that he brings to country radio, but he certainly does do better than the majority of people who attempt this style of production. Where this album suffers a little bit is in a few of the party tracks, most notably Sounds of Summer and Back Porch. Look, neither of them are bad songs by any stretch of the mind, but they aren't exactly memorable, mostly due to the typical arsenal of country party cliches. And look, while I know that the melodies are more anchored to Bentley's vocals rather than the guitar lines, I can't help but feel that this album isn't going to stick with me in the same way because the instrumental hooks, this they just aren't that strong and they can't really match the rest of the album's presentation. So. In the end, I wasn't expecting to be floored by this album, and I'm not, let me stress this. But you know what, Dirk Bentley's Riser is a unique sounding, defiantly modern country record, but there's warmth and subtlety and good songwriting talent underneath it all that actually manages to lend this album a lot of character and likability. It's an album with maturity and real emotion underscoring it, and it takes some pretty sizable songwriting risks for a mainstream country album. And the fact that Bentley actually manages to stick the land is impressive. I'll give him that. I won't say it's entirely my thing, or it's even an album that I will stick with me for the next few months, but you know what? I can recognize quality when I see it. So this album gets a 7 out of 10 and a recommendation. Fans of Dirk Bentley, you're gonna love this album. Trust me on that. But even if you're not a fan, I recommend you give Riser a chance. I did, and you know what? I'm pretty damn satisfied with the overall results. <sighs> so yeah, thanks a lot for watching. If you'd like to like and subscribe, I'd be more than grateful. If there's anything I might be able to do to improve my presentation, or if there's any other albums coming out in 2014 that you'd like me to cover, I'd be more than happy to take a listen. So until then, see you next time.